Where did I get this incredibly awesome shirt? Links are in the description, Apple Sheet merchandise, you can check it out. Today I'm finally going to be doing that thing you guys kept requesting. I was waiting for my iPad to get here so I could record it in true, better format, I don't know. I just wanted my new iPad before I jumped into the changes in iOS 11 for the iPad OS, which if you saw my top five video of my favorite changes they made, the redesign to the iPad is by far the coolest. And I would like to go over some of my favorite features in this as well as some just tutorial things because they changed it quite a bit and there's a little bit of a learning curve. So some of you might be a little bit confused when you get iOS 11. I hope this video prepares you for all of that and maybe when it comes out for everyone you can watch this again and just kind of rewire your brain a little bit. And I do think these changes are better. They are different and there's a couple things you can't do the same way you did before but I do think for the better iOS 11 on the iPad is an improvement. So the first thing you realize as soon as you get iOS 11 on your iPad is that they have definitely changed the dock to make it look a lot more like a Mac. Now you have a whole row of apps that will stay there depending on whatever screen you're on and the last three on the side are not even apps you choose to put there those apps are the your most recently used I think it's a little weird that you can have an app on your dock that you've added there yourself and since you use that app recently it's also in your recently used tab I wish they would fix that and make that not count like we don't need the same app on the dock twice it's a little weird but however the home screen is pretty normal other than this dock redesign but as soon as you swipe up how on iOS 10 that's how you access control center you instantly notice something different. So let me swipe up here. Now you have control center and multitasking being shown to you at the same time. This control center, of course, is just as customizable. It's just the layout is a little bit differently laid than it is on an iPhone. All of those same options are there though, even the flashlight. However, when you go in here, still no calculator app. Apple, what's wrong with a calculator on an iPad, please? But for the most part, all of these control center things are the same. But now let's get a little bit into multitasking. So when I'm in an app like Twitter, keep in mind there are two ways to do multitasking. One is slide over, which I will show you right here. It's when I swipe up and the dock appears, I grab one of my apps, so for instance, Messenger, and I just hover it wherever I want over this display. I'll just drop it there. You see, now Messenger is covering Twitter. I can still use Twitter, but a lot of it is being covered up by Messenger. This is not split view. This is slide over, and one of the changes that you couldn't do in iOS 10 is now I can slide my slide over app to the left or the right. And of course, this works in portrait mode as well, but I prefer in landscape when you're multitasking. So of course Messenger here works fine and Twitter works fine, but Messenger is now covering up Twitter, which for certain apps you don't wanna do. Even though Twitter has a lot of free space, there's other apps that don't. So in order to activate split screen multitasking, there's this little tab at the top of Messenger and I just pull down on it and now the apps aren't covering each other. Luckily, both of these developers have optimized their apps to be split screen friendly. So now none of Twitter is being covered up. I can still see Twitter in all of its glory and Messenger is also in most of its glory. It is in a very narrow part of the screen, but it still all works there. And this is of course how you can activate that very convenient half and half split view. So now Messenger gets half the display, Twitter gets half the display. It's a lot more fair that way. So now if we really wanna go overboard, I'm gonna bring up YouTube here and it's still double tapping the home button. That hasn't changed. Or four finger gestures, that still activates multitasking. Watching Talos of movie reviews right here. Let's say I want to drag in messages. So I just drag it. Hold it, hold it over like this, and see now Messages is covering all those related videos. Maybe if you're on Facebook or something and you don't want all those ads on the side, you could put slide over menus on it. But if I do want to see those related videos, drag that tab down and voila, now we have Messages and YouTube running at the same time. And here's something I do appreciate. On iOS 10, split view multitasking didn't really follow any kind of rules. But now if I want to have Messages in YouTube be something I continually go back to as well as Messenger in Twitter, when I go back to multitasking, we see it saves those presets. So now instead of having YouTube open and messages open and messenger open and Twitter open, it recognizes that those two apps I had running at split view are still going in the background. So I can go back to messenger and Twitter and we're still in the split view window. To me, that's really clever and it's a lot more efficient. And here's when things start getting very crazy. So if I'm in YouTube and messages like this, watching Dan's video, and I don't want to hear that yet, so I'm going to turn the volume off very simply with control center, which doesn't have 3D touch 
touch, but when you touch and hold, it still opens that same menu. So I can change this volume like this. I could leave it where it is and change it like this. Same with brightness. And of course, I can add more and more options. But let's say I'm on YouTube in Messages. I'm running split view windows, but what if I wanna do split view and slide over simultaneously? I don't know why you would, but some people might. So I can swipe up from the dock. I see Apple Music down here. I can drag it and hold it. And if I hold it over a shaded area, it will then replace that window. So I can just replace individual split view windows and that works on the left or the right one. If I wanna put messages over YouTube, it goes just like that. But if I want messages, music, and Twitter, I can drag Twitter out and instead of picking one side or the other, if I want to have Twitter, messages, and music open at the same time, I can drag Twitter out like this and instead of picking one shaded side or the other, I'll drag Twitter right in the middle there and when I drop it, now it's a slide over effect. So Twitter, Apple Music, and messages are all running at the same time. And of course you could actually have picture in picture running on top of all of this. So you could have picture in picture playing from Twitch or something. I'll bring that out here. Okay, now I've got picture in picture and I've got Twitter and I've got messenger and I've got Apple Music all running at the same time. So there is a lot more multitasking capabilities in iOS 11 on the iPad now. Some people have said there's more ways to add even more windows at once, but I haven't figured it out and I don't think I want to because I don't think I'm even gonna do this very often. This is an insane amount of multitasking and I haven't experienced any lag with the new iPad. It's still maintaining 120 hertz refresh rate and keep in mind I'm recording the display as this is happening. So the four gigabytes of RAM in this thing are being fully used I'm sure and I think this is great. I think this makes it as functional and even a bit more optimized than multitasking is on a Mac where you have to kind of drag around windows, resize them. This feels more organized and I feel like I can navigate this quicker. So that's kind of the basics of multitasking on iOS 11 for the iPad and that is the most noticeable change. There's a lot of other changes out there but I think that's the one people need the most help with and they're gonna have to tweak the way they know their iPad a little bit but you'll get there. Did not take long for me to figure it out and I hope you all enjoy it when it becomes available to the public this fall. This is your Apple Sheep here and I will see you in the next one.